Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we continue our quest to solve the 2020 final exam on helium mass transfer. We already did problem one, two, and three, so now we go on to problem number four. Problem number four is about flat plate convection, and it reads like so. Air at 30 degrees Celsius in two atmospheres is flowing under laminar conditions over a flat plate wing of a model aircraft at a speed of 5 meters per second. The molar weight of air is 29 grams per mole. Calculate the boundary layer thickness at a distance of 30 centimeters from the leading edge of the plate. And when the plate is heated over its entire length to a temperature of 50 Celsius, calculate the heat transfer per unit area in the first 30 centimeters from the flat plate wing. So we are to find two different things. First part is to find the boundary layer. So they want us to find it's a bit slow. So they're asking us what is the delta T, right? The thermal boundary layer of this situation here that is over the plate. And the other question is what is heat transfer per unit area? That is what we use lower case Q, right? Or same thing as the rate of heat per unit area in the first 30 centimeters of the flat plate. A couple of things that we want to highlight here are that we have laminar conditions, so it's already given us that this Reynolds is below the threshold Reynolds, so great, we know straight to go into the laminar conditions equations. But we want to note that air coming over the plate is at two atmospheres, so this is going to influence some of the properties we need to grab to be able to solve for Reynolds, which is required for Nussel, which is required for the convective heat transfer coefficient. And the other thing is here that this is grams per mole and not kilograms per mole, that's relevant. And I want to call your attention because we actually did this very same question on the channel before, except we the question stopped here, right? So it was going to this point here. And then we did it, we only found Reynolds, that's all we were looking for. So what was, what was the Reynolds for that, those conditions? I'll leave a link to it right here so you guys can check it out if you want to, but you know. It's going to be slightly different now because now we have the addition of the other temperature. So that means we're going to be looking for the film temperature to be able to find the properties. Okay, so let's jump into solving this. So you can see the previous solving of all the other questions we did already. Uh, we're doing number four now. I already left this table. And once again, this table was on the exam. So I'm not, you know, cheating by grabbing things that like, you, you wouldn't have in the exam. And I have the table here, which is a summary of equations for a flat plate. With the properties given at T film, that is the mean or the average between the wall and the infinity. Um, we have here local laminar and local equations for us to find Nussel. Okay, what's the game plan? Well, we want to find the boundary layer, thermal boundary layer, and lowercase cube heat, heat flux, right? To find heat flux, that comes from Newton's law of cooling, which tells us that the amount of heat transfer is going to be related to our convective coefficient area delta t. Because we want heat flux, then this simplifies further just to convective heat transfer coefficient and delta t. This we know, right? This is the 30 minus the 50. This is easy. Now, this is the problem. To find H, we're going to need Nussel number, which in turn requires Reynolds and Reynolds, and we can find all of those. But Reynolds in, in requires the density, the viscosity, <clears throat> the velocity, and the characteristic length. So we have this, we have this. We need to grab these two fellows, so then we can calculate this one. So with this, we can calculate this one, and this one, like so. That's what, that's the game plan, all right? Now we need to identify which equation we're gonna be using to find Nussel, okay? So we know it's laminar already because the problem said so, so we can eliminate all the turbulent equations. Um, but we wanna find the heat flux, let me draw this so this is easier. We wanna find the heat flux for the 30 centimeters from the leading edge, right? That's what the problem is saying. So that means that if this is my leading edge here, right? This is where my air is coming over my plate. So there's my air. We have 30 centimeters from the plate, and we know there will be a given h, which we call the local coefficient, right? So the local coefficient for that q, right? This q, however, is related only to that specific location. And what we're interested in is what is the heat transfer over this whole area here, that is from the leading edge all the way to the 30. To do that, what we can do is we can grab the average H that we get, that is we'll combine all the all the local H's we get as we go down the plate, and we divide by 
some little up and we divide by the distance we are uh, traveling and that's going to give us our average okay so if we get the average h we can solve for the average q coming out of that which is what we're looking for so i'm interested in the average so you can look at the muscle bars there so this one this one this one and you'll see that this is laminar average if my Reynolds is smaller than 5 to the 10 fifths and uh, sorry 10 to the 5 and our t wall is constant and this other one here is for laminar turbulence so it's a combination we know this is not the case because it says clearly it's um, laminar and same thing here okay so this leaves us with this equation here which is what we're going to be using okay so it's just going to be two times the local so if you look here this is the local on your laminar conditions with t wall constant and Randall's between 50 and 0.6 so it's just two times that all right we're still going to check our Prandtl but because it's here I'm sure it's going to be between the two there all right brilliant um what else well if we keep going here this is the same table that also gives us the boundary layer thicknesses okay so the equations for different boundary layer thicknesses and this in this case it's very straightforward because there's only one for laminar so therefore as long as my Reynolds is below five times ten to the fifth then we can use this relationship here so my thermal boundary layer over any distance that I wish it's just going to be five times Reynolds local Reynolds to the minus half okay so that means that also I need Reynolds to be able to find the thermal boundary layer so if we re if we want to start here which is you know the first part of the question I just need to multiply x which I know that's the 30 centimeters I can convert into meters uh, 5 and then Reynolds on those 30 centimeters so the 0.3 to the minus half so straightforward all right so let's find Reynolds so we can solve this problem to do that remember that Reynolds can be calculated at the density times the velocity characteristic length and the kinetic viscosity you can also use the kinematic viscosity but I prefer to always use this one the release density because it's easier for you guys to remember um, to account for the to account for the um, difference in pressure okay what do we have here for the wall we know this guy is for the air I should say sorry for the air this guy is at two atmospheres it's coming at five meters per second and the molecular weight is 29 grams per mole and what else do we have the temperature is 30 let's see if any it's 30 celsius plus the wall is at 50 celsius so the very first thing i'm going to do is i want to find what's my t film which is going to be just a mean from 80 by 2 is 40. so over 40 celsius is the mean temperature the film temperature if i want this in uh kelvin just you know sum up 273 oops this way and you get 330 kelvin all right brilliant so this is where i'm going to grab all the properties so those properties that i mentioned before i'm going to grab at 313. to do that i need to interpolate and use my table once again so i'm going to go back to the same table we've been using this one here it's looking kind of messy now get rid of some of these things cool um we want 313 so we know that's going to be between 300 and 500 it can probably get both at one go those are the values we're going to be looking for we want to oh I think we should take advantage of this we're going to need all those we're also going to need the collectivity right so collectivity because we need to calculate h afterwards so we want something between 300 and 350 and we want the density we want the dynamic viscosity we want the Prandtl and the conductivity so let's write these guys out and we want this for 313 Kelvin so this guy is 1.1774 1 this guy here is 0 0.998 this guy here is 1.8462 point eight zero zero seven five. Prandtl is 0. 78.697 and look how uh Prano is indeed between the 0. 0.6 and the 50 that we needed this is 0. 0.0 where is it 0. 0.02624 and this is 0. 0.03 
or alt three. All right, now I'm going to do a linear interpolation. Um, should know how to do this by now. If you not, have a look here at the video, especially learn how to do it on the calculator so you're not, you know, skipping a beat, especially in an exam like this. So I got here. Let's do this in quite clean. I got this one to be 1.13. Probably, yeah, that's fine. 1.905688. So that's 6 is fine. Here is 0 0.705. 14. 0 0.57. Fine. And then here is 0 0.0. 27. 22. 54. 22. Here's fine. Brilliant. So I have the properties now. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Take it down with us. Uh, just don't forget this is times 10 to the minus 5, right? You can't forget that. Cool. So where are we? Here we are. Let's drop these guys down. Let's remind these that this is 10 to the minus 5. And now we're good to calculate our Reynolds. Because, oh, actually, we're not. Because this is for one atmosphere. So we want to make sure that we're accounting for that, right? So density at one atmosphere is 1.13. And if we, again, there's two ways to do it. You can see if drop a video here for um, one way and a second way. Uh, the way they like best is, you know, just do the ratio of the pressures. So the, the P2 and P1, which is one atmosphere. So in this case, we have the pressure given in atmosphere. So we just, we're just going to do two atmospheres divided by one atmosphere. The units go away on both. So pretty much we're just doubling the density, right? More pressure, we expect the molecules to be closer together, more packed together. So therefore, we expect our density to increase, right? So pretty much just doubling here for two. Two, six. Okay, now we should be ready to calculate Reynolds. So my Reynolds number, and this is 4.3, right? So from 0.3 meters from the leading edge of the plate will just be the 2.26 times my velocity, which is 5, times my characteristic length, which is a 0.3 meters, and I'm dividing the whole thing by the 1.9. 6 times 10 to the minus 5. I got a number, a big number, but I'm just going to write the short version of it. So I got 1.78 times 10 to the fifth. This is the number that I actually used to solve the rest of the question. Okay. And then know that this is indeed smaller than 5 times 10 to the fifth. Well, not much, but it's enough for us to confirm. Okay, this is indeed laminar. No problems there with the statement being different from what we just found. And the other thing is, note how, like I mentioned, our random is indeed between 0.6 and 50, which is one of the conditions to be able to use our Nessel number relationship that we are about to use. Okay, so temperature of the wall is constant at 50. Uh, Reynolds is indeed below 5 times 10 to the fifth. And our Prandtl, remember that this, this, guy's, this guy here comes from this guy here. And our Prandtl is between the 0.6 and the 50. Cool. All right. So... 0.664 Reynolds to whatever distance we want, the local Reynolds as well. Um, half Reynolds to the third. So I want to find my Nussel number. So Nussel 4 to 0.3 will be 0.664 times Reynolds on the 0.3 as well, so the local one to the half times Reynolds to the third. So we're fine. And we have all the th everything we need, so that should be the. Oh, this is by the way average, right? So this is average muscle. If it were local, it would be three, three, two here. But we're getting the average one, which you know is the double the local. So just put the bar there to remind ourselves. Okay, so we have everything. Let's just you know, drop the numbers and solve this thing. So this is times ten to the fifth, half of that, and then point seven or whatever that was, equals five. 0.5 to the one third, one third, and I got this to be. I didn't the 248, but I didn't really calculate it because I went straight and said, okay, this has to be equal to my average 4.3 times characteristic length divided by my k. Let's just write the whole thing. So x divided by my k, which is equal to. 0 0.3, 0 0.3 divided by what was it? 0 0.02. This one here. 0 0.02722. So 
point point two seven twenty two. Okay, and then we can solve for it. And this is the thing we've been looking for. They got twenty two point six. About twenty two point six. Okay. Cool. All right. Now it's the the easy part. Oh, I actually said we we're going to calculate the thermal boundary layer first, right? <laughs> My bad. Oh, this is easier, I guess. Now that we have um, the convective coefficient, you know, you know, heat flux. What's the average heat flux? So let's maybe put a bar here. We'll say average. Uh, let's probably put a bar so we can keep the 0.3 subscript there. The average there is just going to be average 0.3 times delta t. In this case, we know everything. This is 22.6. So again, this is the sum of all the different local coefficients that we know start up higher on the on the leading edge, right? So this is the leading edge. So we know it starts up higher and then it decreases as we go down the plate, right? So <clears throat> this 22.6 is the sum of all these guys here and it's divided by the distance here. So it's pretty much in this drawing of line, it's going to be of this value here. For us, there's going to be a constant value there. This will be our h bar. Um, it is squared per difference in temperature and our difference in temperature is 50 minus what was the temperature of the air? 30, right? 30, yeah, 30. Kelvin or Celsius, difference in temperature. So this gave me about 452. 452. This is watts per meter squared because we're getting rid of the difference in temperature. And that will be one of our answers, right? So this will be second part of the answer for this question here. <clears throat> now, thermal boundary layer, that's the easy part. Now that we did the hard work, just come down here, already left it set up, and we know this is just going to be thermal boundary layer, it's just going to be x, which is 0.3, that's where we're getting our Reynolds, and this is 1.78 times 10 to the fifth and to the minus one half. Okay, so the square root of the division. And I got this to be point oh oh three five five goes on. Unit here, know that this there's no unit here, so this is you know Reynolds, no units. This is a five that was there from the start, <clears throat> and no units are assumed. And this guy I put in meters. So every no a lot of things without any units and meters, so this gives our answer in meters. So we might as well say this is one, two, three. It's just 3.55 millimeters, which is more consistent, you know, with the thermal boundary layer. So this would be the first part of the answer. The 450-ish would be our second part of the answer. Note what we're saying is, again, we're looking at the looking at this plate here, right? And we're looking 30 centimeters from the leading edge. So if I look on this direction here, if I'm looking at this direction here. I would see just one dimension of the plate. This would be my leading edge here. So this is my leading edge. And I'm looking 30 centimeters down. And I know that as I'm going down the plate, my thermal boundary layer is increasing. Right? It's zero at the start. And at 30 centimeters, I can tell you after doing all this calculation that the distance of the height of this thermal boundary layer is about 3.55 millimeters. Okay, so that's what we conclude with this question. If you have any doubts, anything that's not clear, let me know in the comment section. Um, if this helps you out, consider liking the video, and we'll talk soon.